In this video, we're going to discuss the adjusted allocation rate approach. So this is a method for dealing with and disposing of any over or under applied manufacturing overhead balance. If you remember, there's a difference between the actual and the applied amount of manufacturing overhead. And we have a several things that we can do with that. One is we could just close out the balance to cost of goods sold, just bury it there. Another is we could actually prorate the balance, the under or over applied balance uh, among work in process inventory, finished goods inventory, and cost of goods sold. Okay, so we could do either of those approaches, but it actually is a third approach where you could actually go back. So assuming you use job order costing and, and your actual manufacturing overhead exceeds what your applied was, and you say, okay, we didn't apply enough manufacturing overhead. Let's go back to each and every job. Now that we know what the actual manufacturing overhead rate is, let's go back to each job and use that actual rate so that we make an adjustment as a, so no longer we have any kind of over or under applied balance, all right? So let me show you an example of how this works. So let's say we've got a job here, uh, job 235, it's still in process, it's not been completed, and we've got so far direct materials used of $500, direct labor incurred of $300, and then we've applied $1,000 of manufacturing overhead. How did we apply this $1,000 of manufacturing overhead? Well, if you remember, we calculate a predetermined overhead rate. So for this company, let's say that the predetermined overhead rate was $20. The way I got that is I said, okay, maybe for this company, they budgeted, uh, they budgeted manufacturing overhead of $800,000. Okay, they budgeted for $800,000, and they budgeted they were going to apply manufacturing overhead on the basis of direct labor hours. And so they thought there'd be 40000 direct labor hours. So that comes out to a rate of $20 per direct labor hour. And let's assume this job had 50 direct labor hours. So 50 times 20 is 1000 Okay, And then we get to a total cost for the job of $1,800. Now, let's say it's the end of the period, and we say, you know what? We made a mistake because... Actually, the, the actual manufacturing overhead was a lot more than what was budgeted. It ended up being $1.2 million instead of $800,000. And let's just assume for purposes of simplicity that the direct labor hours, the actual amount, was the same as the budgeted amount. So we'll just change one thing here. There's more actual manufacturing overhead. So if actual is higher than the amount that was applied, that means that we didn't apply enough manufacturing overhead because our rate based on the actual if we take 1.2 million divided by 40,000 it's $30 at direct labor hour so 30 times 50 that would be $1,500 so if we were going to go back and we say okay we didn't apply enough before we had thousand of manufacturing overhead applied which was the 20 times 50 but now we have 30 times 50 which gives us $1,500. That's the amount of manufacturing overhead that should have been applied. So then our total cost for this job would be $2,300 so far. And as I mentioned in this example, the job is still in process. But uh, the total cost before was $1,800, and now it's $2,300. Now, how do we think about this in terms of journal entries? Again, in this example, I said, okay, we're assuming that this job is still in process. So the journal entry you could make, the adjusting journal entry to make all this work, is you could credit manufacturing overhead for $500, because normally when you apply manufacturing overhead, you, you credit manufacturing overhead. So you credit it for that $500 that was under applied, and then you debit work in process inventory for $500. Remember, that's an asset. Now, if, if I told you, if I said, you know, actually this job, 235, it's already been completed. It's no longer in process. It's already been completed. Then in that case, you could you still have the same journal entry, but you would say you debit finished goods inventory. Finished goods inventory would be debited for 500 and manufacturing overhead would be credited for 500. Think about it like this. You didn't apply enough uh, manufacturing overhead. It's under applied. So you're basically just going back and fixing it. You're going back to the job and saying, hey, we didn't apply enough. Let's put in an extra $500. And now, all, all, you know, final example. Now, let's say that this was not a finished good. So it was no longer in process. And it wasn't a finished good either because it already went through finished good and you sold it. In that case, you would debit cost of goods sold for $500 and then credit manufacturing overhead. So the idea is this. You go back to this job and you say, okay, what should have happened here? Well, we should have applied $1,500 of manufacturing overhead because based on what we actually, the actual rate, this is the amount that should have been applied. 
And then you say, okay, was this job still in process? Is it a finished good? Or is it something that we finished and sold? And if so, then you adjust whichever account, WIP inventory, finished goods inventory, or cost of goods sold accordingly.